Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn. I'm a Head of Drama and a Lead Practitioner for Teaching and Learning. I'm going to talk to you today about how you can manage workload because as a teacher, you're the asset that we need in the classroom. We're here because we love this job. It's the best job in the world, but it is challenging in terms of its workload. But there's lots you can do about that and you can manage your own workload to work smarter, not harder. So I'm just going to give you a few tips about how that can be done and then also point you in the direction of where you can find some more advice. So teaching is a very busy job. You will be juggling work all the time and your different commitments in and outside of the classroom. With drama as well, we have to balance the extracurricular side of the work, which can be really demanding, although it can also be the most fun part of our job and the most rewarding. There are lots of ways you can make your workload more manageable. It's also worth bearing in mind that it's your school's responsibility to also make your workload manageable. You can say no to things if they are additional requests. And if your workload is unmanageable, you do need to make sure you speak to someone about it. So I've got four ways here that we can make marking more manageable. The first one is verbal feedback. This works really well in drama because we naturally give verbal feedback all the time. If we watch students working practically on a piece of drama, we would be giving them feedback verbally on what we see in the classroom. So verbal feedback means the teacher tours the class and gives their feedback in the moment verbally, giving really clear strengths and improvements, but then the students are responsible for writing that down. It could also work with a written piece of work. You look at the piece of work, read it, and then give your feedback verbally. So the students then write it down themselves in their books or on their worksheets, and then you can use this stamp, for example, to demonstrate that that feedback has been given verbally. Another way is live marking. It's similar to verbal feedback, but it can be written. You mark in the moment in the class. Students might have produced a small piece of work for you. It might be a short paragraph. And then you can then tour the classroom and mark everybody's paragraph whilst they are then working on something else. This also works really good with practical work. You can watch a performance, mark it live, making some notes on maybe a performer that you've already prepared. That can then just be photocopied and given back to the students in the next lesson. So there's, so there's no extra workload um, attributed to that outside of the classroom itself. Another way of making your marking more manageable is speedy marking. So this is marking a full set of classwork, but instead of writing out everybody's individual targets, you use a code. So you give the students a number and then in the feedback lesson, the students have to find the number and the piece of feedback that corresponds and they write it down. Again, whole class feedback. You mark a full class set of work, but you fill in a whole class feedback sheet with all of the strengths and all of the areas for improvements. This is, this is then photocopied for every student and you spend a full lesson going through that feedback. There are also ways to cut down the time that you spend on your planning. So a well-structured lesson is really important, but it doesn't have to be the jazziest PowerPoint in the world. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Look for existing schemes of work. Look at TES. Ask other teachers. Find someone to co-plan with you. Drama departments sometimes are one person departments and that can be really challenging. So reach out to networks, find local schools where there's another teacher who can plan with you. Find out what your school requires from you. Do they need full schemes of work to be written? If not, you don't need to do that. Find out where the reprographics or printing or photocopying room is. A lot of schools will have support staff who will do that admin for you. Your job is the teacher in the classroom. So you can get support with your planning and preparation. Extracurricular drama is the best part of our job. For lots of us, it's really what we get the most of the buzz out of. It's how we find our job most rewarding. But we need to realistically consider what we can achieve. Ask colleagues from different departments to help, help support you and work on a show with you. There could be a geography teacher down the corridor who is a great Amdram performer and would love to be involved in a school show. Use students to help you produce extracurricular work. So ask your older students in Key Stage 4 or 5 to run your lower school clubs with you supervising. There's also ways of buying show kits, which I've shown here, which make that job easier for you, especially if you're a newer teacher. With managing your workload, you've just got to find a routine that works for you, but then try and stick to that routine. Some teachers like to come into work really early, so they're in the building at 7am and they've got that hour and a half of time which is there, they can get a coffee and they can spend their time on their work. Some teachers like to do that and then leave early. 
Some teachers like to stay one evening late each week. I tend to stay until about 7 p.m. on a Monday and then I know I'm sorted for the week and I'm organised. So you will find out what works for you, but try and stick to that routine. If you are marking or planning in your free period, don't have your emails open at the same time because it's just a distraction. Try and stick to one task at a time. Use a timetable to help you manage your work. If you've got a huge pile of assessments, just try and do five each night, um, maybe just taking you an hour, and then you've got through that whole set in a week. It's so important to have time off. It's so important to, to try and have at least one clear day at the weekend free from any work. See friends, see family, connect with other people, get out there, have some exercise, and don't ever feel guilty about that. So with every task, my final tip to you is to ask yourself these two questions. Why am I doing this and does it benefit the students? You need to consider whether the task that you're doing, which is adding to your workload, is going to directly benefit and impact on student progress. If not, do you need to do it? And somewhere to find more information is the Teacher Toolkit website. So Ross McGill, who is the founder of Teacher Toolkit, is an amazing experienced practitioner who's really committed to reducing teacher workload. His website, his resources, the research that he's done are all fantastic ways of you managing your workload. So check that website out with lots of ways to help you manage your teacher workload. And thank you for listening. Remember, you can't pour from an empty cup. We need you in the classroom being the best you can be and therefore you need to look after yourself and make sure your workload is manageable. Teacher burnout is a real thing and we've got to find ways of making this profession work for us as real people with families, friends and hobbies. Thanks very much everyone and best of luck in your careers.